I just got a notification that grades are out. Again, I don't know what day of the week it is. Anyways, this week you guys get to watch me study for a neuro exam. Okay guys, so tonight I'm in charge of making dinner because of this one that doesn't want to cook. For dinner, I'm making salmon and then I'm gonna season this with lemon pepper seasoning, zatarain, cilantro, lime rice, cauliflower, and I'm gonna roast that cauliflower with garlic powder, cumin, um, cayenne and black pepper. So, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> finished product um normally jimmy and i realized like there's like no color on this plate normally we would go for something more colorful colorful but like this is really all we had so bone apple teeth <laughs> before the exam. I can usually like never really actually study that well. Like the hour before, I'm just like getting distracted and I already feel like what's done is done. So yeah, just thought I would document this for some reason. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the flip side. Exam soft up. Got my residual notes that I like can't really remember that well. And then just skimming and doing last second stuff, so yep. Hello friends, it is a couple hours later. I finally took that exam, got it out of the way. It actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, so I'm like super relieved and happy that it all worked out. When you don't have a tripod, you just use seltzer boxes and canned tomatoes. And I thought today would be a good day to go over my notes and kind of show you guys how to take the best effective notes. Now that I know which questions they ask, I can kind of point out what helped me most in the note taking process. Okay, so one thing I would like to point out is I know I was bashing handwriting notes a lot in my <laughs> how to study video, and it's true, I really don't believe in handwriting every single little detail, but for this exam in particular, I noticed that I had a hard time kind of remembering a lot of the pathways, and so I had to take a lot of handwritten notes to help me remember. Okay, so first I'm going to go into how I took notes on my iPad. Oh god, I feel triggered just looking at this again. Okay, so one helpful hint is that I like to color code my notes based on which passes they are. Like I mentioned in my study video, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check that out, I'll link it down below. But basically, the first color that I use to take notes when I listen to lectures is usually like red or something, so that tells me, okay, this is my first pass. Then, the notes that I take based on like a professor's review video or based on a TA's review video has different colors also. And this is important because I wanna tell myself where this information came from. So for example, as you can see, I have some pink writing on there, that is from my first pass. Then I have some blue writing on there. That is from a review video that a TA made. And so I wanted to put that in blue because that way I know like, okay, A, this is coming from a student that has taken an exam from this professor before, so they know what to look out for. But B, it's not coming from the professor themselves, so it might be different year to year, that kind of stuff. One of the reasons why I love using OneNote with the Apple Pencil is, so this is the note that I took in class while watching his lectures, right? So it's really helpful being able to circle exactly on the PowerPoint where like steps one, two, and three are, and to be able to draw directly on the slide. Honestly, I just wish so much that I had this in pharmacy school. Another thing that I like to do is connect my notes from slide to slide. Um, basically, so if a professor says in the beginning of a lecture, 
x equals y plus z. And later on, if that word gets mentioned again in the side parentheses, I'll say like x equals y plus z. So I'm constantly kind of reminding myself of what I learned. This is a little trick that actually goes a really long way because it's a good way of A, testing yourself of what you already learned, but B, connecting the dots of something you learned earlier with why it's important with what they learn later. Also, if I find things comparable in the lecture to each other, like for example, they give the definition of one thing and it's like, kangaroos like to eat this. And then later on in the lecture, I learned something else about kangaroos, like kangaroos like to drink this. And I put a note next to it so that way when I'm studying it, I don't get confused and I say, FYI, kangaroos eat this, but they like to drink that. I don't know why I came up with kangaroos as the example, but you know what I mean. So if this one disease causes loss of fine touch, and then later on I learn about a disease that causes loss of crude touch, then in parentheses I say, remember, this is the disease that caused loss of fine touch, but this is the disease that caused loss of crude touch. So that way I keep them straight in my mind as I'm learning through the lecture. That is also how you incorporate active learning into your note taking, because I actively have to connect what I'm learning right now to what I already learned previously. And this comparison is really good because it makes sure that when you're taking a test that you don't get tripped up and confuse one thing for a different thing that you study, which has happened to me so many times. Okay, next, I think that you can separate notes into basically two categories. You have notes that you just need to straight up memorize. All the information is there for you on the slides. So it's just up to you to organize it in a matter that you can understand it. So this would be things like bullet points, mnemonics, stuff like that. Then you have more conceptual type of things that you need to take notes on. And that is where I really recommend that you draw out thought maps. I try to break down everything sentence by sentence, write it on here. And then I go through it a couple times, circle what I think is important until then I realize that I have like three or four circle things. And then those become the actual notes that I try to remember. So if I read this here, it just says spinothalamic, pain temperature, crude touch, dorsal root ganglion, cross at spinal segment, and then thalamus. So those are five things that I circled. Um, his main PowerPoint had like so many more slides of details and everything, but I got the five main points just by writing everything down and then circling the main points. And then, so when I tried to study after that, I only read the big circled points. So this is really good for PowerPoints where you have like slides and slides and slides of information that you have to know and it's all really, conceptual stuff that is hard to just memorize. That way, after I review this, I didn't have to read all of these ugly words, I just had to read those circles and make sure that I knew which came next. I'm also big into using symbols into my notes, so as you can see, um, if there was something where they lost the sensation, I used an X. If there was something where they kept the sensation, I used a check mark. So this is one entire PowerPoint put onto just one sheet of paper, which I think is really good because it means that I didn't take notes on every single slide, but it also means that I have all the information concisely summarized. I try to keep all of my notes into like one page or one piece of paper per PowerPoint, depending on how long it is, just because that gives me a good gauge of how concise I was with my note taking. I like to do columns side by side because then I can go down and compare them side by side also. So I'm like, hey, this is cool. Dorsal column and spinal thalamic are conscious, whereas spinal cerebellar is unconscious. And that's a good way to kind of like remember things too. Okay, so another thing that I found that was really important is that sometimes the titles mean everything, people, like, like the titles of the slides. So if the titles have something to do with like the number of things or something to do with organization, I try to include that into my notes so that I have a good sense. So for example, the teacher wrote that there are five types of myelated axons. So I took that into account and I kept that as the titles just so that I would know like what this is like five of. Because otherwise, if I'm taking the test, sometimes I'm like, wait, crap, like, am I missing one? So this way, when I'm taking the test, I know, yep, there's five. Over here to another example. So I organize it in my mind. I don't know if the title said it, but I told myself there are two types of lesions. And then I kind of explain the two different types. Over here, I said there are two types of ocular motor. So that way I know that there's two types of different ocular motor movements. And then I kind of used what I did earlier where I circled the main things. And that way, when I was doing my third and fourth pass, I didn't have to read all of my notes. I was just reading what was in the circle so I got through it so much quicker oh god as I'm doing this I just got a notification that grades are out okay let's see neuroscience grade book Whew. okay now I feel like I actually know what I'm talking about and that this is valid <laughs> that I'm giving you guys advice okay cool I am happy with my grade and that is good. Okay, and it's like perfect timing because it's as if they knew and my Sephora package is finally here. So I'm gonna do like a little unboxing Sephora haul for you guys. Also, I just have to say how crazy it is that I only have 
10 more exams left in my semester. So it's just, actually I think it's nine now. I have nine, so I think I have one a week. And then it'll be summer break, so yay. Yay, okay, now I'm going to do a Sephora haul. Which, by the way, can I just say, like, I don't want to ruffle the feathers, but I just think that they would do a lot better if they had really cute packaging. Honestly, I'm such a sucker for cute packaging that I will literally, like, buy a rock if you put it in, like, a cute bag or something. So, those of you guys that follow me on Instagram already know what this is because I literally wouldn't stop talking about it. I'm pretty sure I made, like, a story that was, like, 10 slides long about this product. And, like, so many of you guys bought this with me, too, so that makes me super excited. Um, let's see. First up, we have samples, which is super exciting. Giorgio Armani Lip Maestro Intense Velvet Co Color. Now, granted, I don't really wear red lipstick a lot, but that is something that I've like always been meaning to try, so I guess now's a good chance. Ooh, I am excited for this. This is the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Ultra Cushion Lip Gloss. This shows you all the shades and then the ones that came with it. So it's, I got Obsessed, which is this like, kind of like pinky color, but it's not quite, it's almost like a light peach, but it's more of like a pink peach. And then Dirty Talk, which is this cool like coppery metallic-y color. Back Talk, which is probably like my ideal nail polish color. Like I really like this color a lot. And then this looks like, it's called Snapped, which, looks pretty funky. Okay, so those were just the samples. And then I only got one thing, y'all already know what it is, but ta-da! It's the Fenty Matchstick. I use this every single day to contour my cheeks, contour my nose, contour my chin. Oh my God, wait, I don't know if I blended out my neck today. I'll have to check later, but anyways, I use this to contour. So the shade that I get is an amber. It doesn't actually look like that. I'll show you what it looks like in person. What? Those scissors pretty improperly. <laughs> I didn't think you were watching. What did I do wrong? Everything. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like once it's out of the packaging. I'll show them side by side. One, two, three, four, five, six. It comes in this cool hexagonal tube shape. And then these are actually magnetic, so like it won't stick to this, but it sticks to like my eyebrow tweezers, which is kind of cool. But if you have a bunch of these, the point is that they'll all like stick. Oh my god, yeah. So they'll all like stick together, which is really fun and cool. So this is the color of it. Um, so I got the same shade. Amber is my perfect shade because like, oh, you kind of want colors that like go with your skin tone. Like some skin tones are slightly more yellowy, some skin tones are slightly more cool. And so I found that what looks best on me is amber because it's more cool toned. It's less like orange and like yellowy. So it kind of looks more natural. When you first place this, it might almost look a little bit gray on you, but trust me, like if you blend it out, then it'll blend more naturally and it'll look more like a shadow on your face, like the way that a, nat a natural contour would be, instead of like a ton of bronzer sculpting your face. And another thing that I really like about this matchstick is that it's like super creamy. It's like a creamy like stick sort of, but it clings a lot better to like your nose bridge. I have like a really flat nose bridge or like your cheekbones and it clings better than powder in my opinion. So it stays on all day, which is really great. And that is what I got from Sephora. Yay. Okay, anyways guys, thanks for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.